Our top story tonight, the chief executive of one of Britain's biggest banks is fighting for her job after sensationally admitting she briefed a BBC journalist about the closure of Nigel Farage's Coots bank account. NatWest boss Dame Alison Rose said she made a serious error of judgment by discussing details of the former UKIP leader's accounts with the reporter, saying she thought she was just confirming publicly available information. Well, the BBC reporter Simon Jack apologised yesterday, confessing his story that Farage had been kicked out for not having enough cash was false. Since then, there's been mystery surrounding just who the senior source at the bank was behind the story. And now, in confirming it was her, Dame Alison Rose is facing growing calls to resign. But the bank's board insist they still have full confidence in her. Well, joining me now is Talk TV's political editor, Kate McCann. Um, I've been chatting to people today, Kate, and they've given me the football analogy, which is that apparently if you have the chairman saying he has full confidence in the manager, you know they'll be gone by the end of the week. Yes, I think tonight things don't look good for Dame Alison Rose. You've just outlined really what has gone on today, and it's been a pretty surprising turn of events. There had been lots of speculation about Simon Jack's source for this story about Nigel Farage's bank account. And if you remember reporting that she had been at a dinner with Simon Jack the day before the BBC published a story which said that Farage's account at Coots had been closed because he didn't essentially have enough money to keep it open. Since then, of course, Mr Farage has submitted a subject access request and got lots of information which suggests it's a far more complex picture, which has then resulted in Coots triggering, triggering its own investigation into in, its internal processes. And I think tonight there is some real concern about the way that this has been handled by Dame Alison Rose. And I think it has to be said, some questions about her future, despite, as you say, the fact that the board says it has currently full faith in her. Some suggestions she could lose some of her bonus, a couple of million pounds, five million pounds, I think, uh, last time around. But tonight I can report that the Chancellor has significant concerns about the way that this has been handled, about the fact that Dame Alison was responsible for the leak. And there is this meeting tomorrow with senior figures in the government and senior banking executives, which she is expected to attend, albeit virtually, which is exactly about this issue, about the fact that banks should not be discriminating against their customers because of any of their potential views. I think tonight the picture for Dame Alison Rose looks very uncertain indeed. When you have the Chancellor, and I have to say I've spoken to very senior ministers in the government tonight who have suggested that they too have some deep concerns about the way she has conducted herself, when you're getting that kind of comment made publicly, it's a clear indication that they're going to be trouble down the line for NatWest and Coots and, it has to be said, for Sir Howard Davis, who is the overall boss, of course, of the group. Yes, because it's Coots owned by NatWest and the government, as in us, we have a, a, a 30... Is it a 39% stake in NatWest? Mm -hmm. Yes, the government does. It actually reduced its stake in NatWest and is no longer a majority stakeholder in 2022. So the government has no overall control over the management of NatWest. It has no say in any of its decision-making. People might be surprised to hear that, despite that fairly significant stake. But there's actually nothing that the government could do, even if it potentially wanted to see Dame Alison Rose removed in that role as chief executive. There's nothing that the government can do itself. But I think the pressure that you're seeing tonight from the Chancellor, from others too, and senior positions in government, tells you all you need to know about where this story goes from here. And that's before we get into a conversation about how Nigel Farage feels about this. I think it's fair to say that he believes that still the handling of this has not been satisfactory, that there are questions not just for Dame Alison Rose or Sir Howard Davis, but also for the Coot CEO, uh, that's Peter Flavel. He wants, Nigel Farage wants, all three of those very senior executives to, to lose their jobs over this. I don't believe all three of them will, but as I say, there is now significant pressure on Dame Alison Rose. Thank you very much, Kate. Talk TV's political editor, Kate McCann. Well, joining me now is Conservative MP Bob Seeley. And, uh, Bob, uh, actually, before, before I go on to talk about the NatWest board and, and, and uh, their, back, it's their backing for Alison Rose, 
I suppose the, the point about this is it's not just about Nigel Farage. There are many other people, aren't there, who have lost their bank accounts because of, um, because of their views. Hundred of a few thousand. So Toby Young from the Free Speech Union, he was blocked by PayPal. Uh, Claire Fox, I think, ex-communist, ex-Brexit MP. She's been on the both, you know, formerly the hard left, and then uh, moved over to more traditional right, ex-reform party. So th there are lots of there was a vicar in Yorkshire, I believe, as well. So there are there are this isn't a, a one-off, and there are other people who've been involved. Whether I don't know if it, well, I don't know if it's in in dozens, in hundreds, or in the low thousands. But it seems to be that debanking people is not is not exactly new. So I think Farage is fighting a very important battle for potentially a lot of people in this country. Yes, I think that's the point, is that for an awful lot of us, of course, for the majority of us, uh, we didn't even know that, A, that debanking was a word, and B, that it was something that could happen to you where you ended up with no bank account. Uh, so um, let's talk then about the NatWest board. So the NatWest board has said it is backing um, the CEO Alison Rose. Um, mm. Is that the right thing to do or is that the, the, the sort of thing you expect it to do? Well, I, I think the football manager analogy was a good one. As far as I can see, I, look, I, I mean, I, I don't think she's going to be in her job in a week's time. Let's put it like she's broken confidentiality rules by dis discussing a client. And according to some of the research I was looking into, she may have broken the law by um, discriminating against somebody for political opinions. I've got it in front of me. It's the, one of the EU retained laws from 2015, updated in 2019. A credit institution must not discriminate against, and then it gives a long list, and that includes political or any other opinion, membership of a national minority, property, birth, disability, etc. So it, uh, what I don't know, and I'm trying to find out if Alison Rose has actually potentially broken the law here, or just banking rules, which are maybe sort of, you know, secondary legislation or, or rules internal to the banking industry. But I do think she's in a lot of trouble. Uh, and I think just to make a, a, a wider point, I, mean, I think we're seeing a slight crisis now in what you might call virtue signaling capitalism. So not only Alison Rose at NatWest, but uh, Unilever is coming under a lot of pressure today because despite having a lot of virtue signaling in, with some of its brands like Ben & Jerry's, um, it's still operating in Russia. It's paying millions into um, the uh, to the Russian state in taxes, and that money is going to fund a war in Ukraine, which is killing thousands of civilians, and indeed where children are being stolen um, by by Russia from Ukraine. So you've got to you've got to wonder about this virtue signaling and to what extent it hides. Um, second-rate corporate leadership or venal and amoral practices amongst corporations. Do you think the Prime Minister should step in and if so, what should he do? I think we have to check to see if Alison Rose has broken the law and if she has done, I think there's a case for referring it to the police. And I think, frankly, we need an investigation into banks um, and seeing on what grounds they're debanking people. And if their actions are illegal and unethical, then the government should be taking action to defend people who have lawful opinions, lawful political opinions, but are being prejudiced against, because this is against the law. Bob Seeley, thank you very much. Uh, Conservative MP Bob Seeley, right.